doesn't really take Roshan, but uh, Death Prophet gives you a lot of objective taking. Oh, Whoa, and the juicy. tenth pick Brood, and juicy. guys, I think this is pretty good Brood. Game. Okay, so they yeah. need to swap things around because Zeus can't lane against Brood. Yeah, Centaur right. with the return and that position, especially on the Radiant side, which is still favored in most games. So, so Where? the brood doesn't work in mid for for what reasons? Let's just run through that. It doesn't work in mid. What? Uh, sorry, uh, the um, the Zeus? Zeus doesn't work. Oh yeah, you the can't Zeus kill the spiders. It, yeah. it, you can harass the spiders, and I think in like three or four chains, if you spammed them, you would kill most of them. But the problem is that they he just micro them away, and all of a sudden they regen to full HP, and then they're right back on top of you. You don't have the mana pool to sustain. Um, you can do okay in the first couple of levels. I expect that he'll go for more of like a double null build, or just try and abuse damage because you will have like 20 on Brood at the early levels. Of course, the Quelling Blade does neutralize that advantage. Mm -hmm. But as the levels and Spider Army grow, uh, Zeus really has to just leave the lane. And if I'm Alliance here, I'm thinking maybe I put the Centaur against the Brood at least later on into the game. So at least they have that answer in the sense that there is a hero that can be planted on the tower to prevent him from taking it. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing more and more players doing this, where they walk in range of the tower to see where the vision's where the vision is to see like try and find the observed ward. This time, like Tiger got hit by the tower, but the ward's on the other side, mm. so we actually waste the sentry in mid lane. Uh, Bounty runes gonna be a three-one split in favor of RNG. No contest wow. on the bottom lane. Yeah, and, and you can also see they're actually gonna do what I think it might be ideal here, and the, the centaur is just mid. Yep, you, you don't want Zeus there. Theoretically, the first couple levels can be okay, but yeah, as I said, like you, you have to rotate out at some point, so mm -hmm. why not just put him against the CK, Grimstroke combination? As long as you're able to keep your ET between you and the enemies, you should be fine. It feels a little nicer as well, at least having like the ET with the Zeus early on, because that's, that's that synergy you were looking to see Alliance utilize. And then Taya can try and come in and push him hard. Even though he's having a little bit of trouble on the bottom lane, he gets hit heavily by the stuns. Just uh, the issue and the other abuse. Like, we, we saw this time and time again during the minor. Um, and Vorgesa, they, they were the ones who were always abusing this CK as well as Grimstroke. Just the ink swell and yep. you just, your reality rift, you just pull in whoever you want on top of I mean, you. And then you can save your son for later. It's pretty much any of these melee strength cores with stuns, right? The CK, the Sven, the Wraith King, anything with the Grimstroke just looks far more powerful. Because you get that immediate catch, double stun combo. Oh, look at this bomb. Oh, they're actually just doing it again. Tiger wanted to come and harass. He had plus 61 damage. Now he makes a break for the tree line. That movement speed, but they cut through it. Afu finds the first blood on Alliance's dual off lane, unwillingly kind of running it. But Mickey looking for his own revenge into Lanham with the spin. They can't get a lot of damage in, and now maybe wow. flyby. Can't find his own target. Really well played there by Lanham, just a continuously attack move. If he doesn't uh, push for damage there, Mickey can just chase and potentially get the last hit. Kind of like that from Flyby. I think he actually had the uh, the spear off cooldown when Mickey was running away, but he wanted to wait to try and cancel the salve, but uh, ended up missing the spear. Yeah, the bright spot for Alliance though is they did get the lanes they wanted, and Brood is not nearly as scary when you have this hero like Centaur that can sit in the lane and free farm against it. And it ends up favoring the Centaur, and Boxy will have this excellent time in the game, and RNG need a huge game from their Brood to be able to take it. Their lineup doesn't oh, scale as well as Alliance's. This is nice for Mickey. Yep. He finally gets that catch-up that he was looking for previously. And it feels like Juggernaut, there's a lot of pressure. Like, like we've seen some Juggernauts that have really been underwhelming. And yep. I'm, like, how does Juggernaut stand up against the damage output that can come from the CK and the control from the rest of RNG? Oh, it's just, it, it, Jug is a hero that has to be ahead. But from the laning phase to the mid-game. Uh, otherwise, you just start falling off. And you know, thinking about it, even though the Brood pick was scary, which is still what I'm most concerned about if I'm an Alliance fan, you got to figure that they've got enough experience to be confident against this hero. They picked it before it became meta and... You know, they, they definitely have a good understanding of what the weaknesses of the hero are. Mm -hmm. And you can already see, like, Boxy double shield. This is classic. Whenever you're playing against the Brood Spiders, you increase the block percentage from 50 to 75%. And in addition, you block all of the damage from these little spiders. And then you just buy a Vanguard, and Setsu will have, be able to do nothing but watch Boxy stand in lane and last hit freely. Well, having some fun up on top lane. Mickey attempted to start off with Insania's wall. Yeah. Ended up by catching the Shaman in position there. So far, so good for Alliance. Look at the bottom as well. You know, the CS is even, but I'd say that definitely favors Alliance when you consider both heroes are suffering. And they're free farming on both of their big cores at the moment. 
A passive game certainly is going to favor Alliance because RNG, they want to push the tempo early, try and take these tier ones by the 10 to 12 minute mark. It's important they make plays around the catapults. But that's going to be difficult. Like, where's the magic damage coming from that will actually be able to deal with Boxy? Like, this is <laughs> the highest strength gain hero in Dota 2 as a mid laner that will be buying Vanguard by six minutes. And he can push buildings. Like, that's that's the way he also can function. Koifer can do the counter pushing up as, uh, oh, nice two seconds done. They realize the amount of damage the Tiger's got. He's moving down and hitting to Avu, but the stun control is way too good. And Alliance, once again, they feel like they can get a kill in this dual off lane. And once again, they get denied by RNG. Yeah. And the CK had 14 wand charges as well. It's not as if he's going to fall off anytime soon down here. You got to just be less aggressive, I think. I'd love to see maybe some more creep pulls because playing aggressively into CK Grimstroke, you're just, you know, how does a Zoo CT land a kill without a major error from your enemies? You don't have real disable, whereas the Grimstroke CK have multiple forms. And actually, again, it feels a little like um, deceiving for the mid lane was the CS. Mm. 38 to 7 against the uh, the Broom on the 24 for 9. Net worth wise, it's, uh, it's about 150 gold that separates the two of them. Yeah, I think it's the XP that's more important. And the fact that Brood definitely wants to play aggressive side of the map, not just be relegated to his own jungle. But one of the things about this hero, much like TA, hold up bottom. Yeah, here they go again. Just the one second sun from Monet doing try and ensure the Tiger can't walk this off. Yeah. After the changes to Ancients, now that there's only one camp as well, it's a super value uh, spot to gain resources, but there's very few heroes that can actually utilize it early on in the game. And you'll notice that all of the ones that can't, notably TA, Sven, and Brood, are all meta. Um, specifically TA and Sven, who can actually do the stacks. Brood's just going to farm single camps up there, but you know one of the reasons we see TA so much, not just because the refraction on Deny, that's a whole other point, but mm -hmm. you, know, you can do Ancient stacks by yourself at like level 8. That's just not okay. And Stampede up now, so Alliance can look to get aggressive. We'll have a Vanguard on Boxy in a moment as well. Makes it actually kind of difficult for RNG to do any level of rotation. Like, you're, yeah. you're talking about taking Ancients, but like there's there's no hero that can just move in the lanes. The the Shaman as well as the Grimstroke from RNG, like, where is their movement meant to come? Is it meant to yeah. stop Alliance? Yeah, that's why I'm surprised that RNG just kind of gave Alliance this laning setup. I expected there to be some shenanigans. I didn't think that Alliance would just get Centaur versus Brood the entire game. This is mm -hmm. ideal for them. Unless RNG just like, you know what, the Broodmother's still going to win yeah. out at the end of the day. Because I, I suppose the Centaur doesn't have to leave the mid lane. But, but it, it's fine. The Brood should never fall behind. The thing is, Bottom is not doing as well as you would hope. Because they've fed a couple of kills to that Grimstroke CK combo. And sure, Mickey is farming top, but it's a trade. Whereas Bottom, Zeus has a very difficult time sticking into the lane. Actually, behind the Grimstroke significantly in net worth already. And it only gets worse here. They can go for a kill whenever they want. Tiger's still very uncertain about it. Spirit into the stomp, just trying to create a little bit of space, having to move it a little bit further over. Let's get the double stomp, and Saini has rotated himself in. They want the kill on nice Arthur Koifer, barely staying alive, moves into the tree lines, cuts through one, then jukes up to the north. Insaney's got to body block it out, but no, he actually body blocked up Koifer instead. Couldn't get the right positioning for it, so Monet gets his crit in and finds the kill on the Zeus. While up on top, lane, Mickey's in a lot of trouble. Hex is out. Into the trees, a quick healing ward. This may give him just enough life to be able to survive some long, like a little bit longer, but where's the support? Sit one charges get burnt. The healing ward does get killed off. And RNG, well, you've got your first control, but there's no real follow-up from Flyby that can be utilized. You're okay with that, though. Uh, Mickey, you know, that's all because of the teleport bottom. Really heads up play by RNG. As soon as you see that a support has abandoned top, you immediately look to pressure the carry. I'm going to force a wand and a bunch of regen needing to be purchased. And bottom Koifa still, even with that rotation, it's nice. It gets him a little bit back into it, but there's still not much you can do to contest the CK, who's already doubled him up in net worth. Yeah, they just try and hold in. If there's an opportunity, sure, they'll go for it. But the uh, the Elder Titan's functioning very much like just the babysitting off laner. Make mm -hmm. sure the Zeus doesn't have a terrible lane. Make sure the CK doesn't have a free lane. I'm curious to see how Boxy itemizes in this game, because he could theoretically just go for this super beast Centaur build, like I envision maybe even buying like some heart third item because okay. there's no real method RNG have of killing him in this game if he gets himself strong enough. I think that if there were a game for not buying Blink, this would be it. It's mm -hmm. especially because you have a disruptor, right? So in reality, you can play Centaur like a bristleback and trust that you'll always have catch behind him thanks to your. Um, your five position. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what he looks to do here because they also don't have that real initiation uh, unless he does buy that blink dagger. 
Right now, he's just going through the normal motions. The Chainmail has got boots in his quick buy. Shackles are out. Now, RG, they bring the damage in, and we see if they can break through a Centaur. Mikkei wants to help out, but they have wow. enough damage. They get the Centaur down, and Mikkei into the spin. They have Afu caught inside that static field, and they don't have enough damage to get the job done. Now, Mikkei slowed down, hitting him hard. A quick glimpse back, but you've already got the Shackles. The they Lord. get the kill onto the Juggernaut, and there's two quick core deaths from Alliance, yeah, and, and the pressure being applied to the mid-tier one. Four heroes mid. That was a great rotation from RNG, and it's all set up because Setsu has that medallion early. So even though you have a Vanguard on Centaur, it doesn't matter. He's taking your pure damage because he doesn't have the plus armor necessary to stay alive. Does not have the, uh, did not have the phase boots. The chainmail was still oh, in Mone base. Just wants to keep it going. Kind of easy to find out where, where Tiger is. Uh, Boxy, hoof stomped down, holding two heroes. A quick double edge, clean up as much as you possibly can in the lines as the spirit comes out once more. It's insane, also caught in the tree lines. Lanham, functioning with the rest of RNG. Yeah, they've jumped out to this huge lead. I'm not even sure like how this happened. It's A lot of it is just the supports and, again, the bottom lane. Like, look at Koifa right now. He's falling behind Lanham. Mm -hmm. And... He's not even confident enough to go play bottom at the moment, actually just jungling with his ET because he recognizes that with Grimstroke off map, him plus one just ends in his death once again. He'll move there now because they see so many heroes top and a typical uh, Chinese meta play, they're setting up for this catapult that'll spawn in 15 seconds, but they might not even need it. They're just gonna go straight for the yep. tower. They get, a, they get an easier not initiation, again, a quick hex out. They put the wall up. They just want the Juggernaut down. They're gonna claim him. The perfect time, five seconds before the bounties will spawn up. This is literally just Lanham. It's little. just Lanham walking at people. Little cheeky from Boxy. He actually moved over to try and claim the bounty runes. And have we seen a stampede yet this game? I don't think we have. No, we have not. To get in or out. It's just strange because Boxy's been level six since like four minutes in. I'd figure they would have used it at some point, even even if it's squandered. You know, it just feels like he's forgotten about that skill. Love what Setsu's done here as well. Just the medallion soul ring rush, so he's able to continuously sustain and farm as efficiently as possible straight into a Midas. So RNG recognizing, like, you know, maybe we won't win into the mega late game, but right now we're ahead. Let's turn this advantage into economy, and then we'll just look to control the map, which they will have an easy time doing when you consider that Alliance's damage output and catch potential is very limited at the moment until Insania has more points in Glimpse and the cores have more farm, because right now, you know, Zeus and Jug are suffering. Yeah, Koifa doesn't hit hard at all. Like, he's... Like, even with the uh, the combination with an ET, maybe this is a nice way to do it, so you'll, you'll get him caught in the wall. And Shaman will die. Koifa wants to kill Secure, lets the Thunder God's Wrath out. Reveals RNG moving aggressively into the northern jungle. They get the mid tower as well, which is quite nice. And Zeus is one of those heroes, especially with an ET. Like, you you don't need too much net worth, right? All of your damage comes from your spells. So, in theory, so long as you're able to cast them, you're going to be just fine. Aether Lens and enough mana to spam for 30 seconds. That, that's effectively peak Zeus. And sure, you'd love the Veil and, like, an E-Blade Blink Ags, but really, it's it's like Aether Ags, and that's your, your big spike. If he can get there without this game getting too far out of hand, I think Alliance will be in a fine spot. But right now, they got to deal with RNG playing super aggressive within their own woods. They're trying to avoid the spirit. Stomp's gonna come out, only ends up catching out in one. And that's fine for Monet. Yeah. He'll tank it through. The pressure's being applied towards the mid tower. It's just the Broodmother, and there's little box he can do about this because he's worried. He doesn't have teammates that can easily get to him, and if they do, they get wrapped around behind. The micro's so good as well. You can see Boxy just caught between a rock and a hard place. He wants to prevent the spiders from hitting tower, but Setsu just continuously annoying him, microing both hero and minions at once. Drums now on Mika. He recognizes he needs to get a fight item stat. It will be a blink dagger on Boxy, it appears. Yep. He, he, it's just because you, you can't find kills otherwise. They don't have setup for the stomp. Setsu will be able to finish this tower, perhaps. It's in deny range. Yeah, the Spires can just run back in and have another crack at it if they want to, but Tiger's got all the damage in the world, so one hit from him. And the tier one tower will be denied. That leaves only one remaining out of tower. Yep. Uh, uh, remaining tier one tower for Alliance. That's on bot lane. Uh, oh, jump him. Afu, looking for the target. Koi, but not caught inside of the arena of blood. And Afu actually nice. walked back into the static storm to die. Yeah, I'd really like to see them rotate the lanes, though. I, okay, they did, actually. It's exactly what I would hope. Mickey goes bottom, and you put the Zeus top, because you want to alleviate this pressure from RNG and also control vision within the jungle. Mickey can lane bottom freely at the moment, because other than the Brood, there's no real way to pressure him during a spin TP. Mm -hmm. you know, it would be raw physical damage taking him down. There's no interrupt. 
And we'll rely on the rest of his teammates to do the counter push. Boxy has to come in and be the tank. He's the only real player on Alliance with net worth, sitting just shy of 6,000. Almost 7,000 on the Broodmother. She adds more pressure, and so does RNG Smoke up on their two supports. But it's the, the problem of Flyby. Caught inside the wall, and no way to escape. Yeah, just keep in mind, Alliance's draft is looking to get this game later. The ET Zeus combination is really peak strength when he's maxed out. Boxy again, limited armor, taking a lot of damage. Perfect chain stuns. Wet may as well burn the Phantasm. If they can find this kill, they're gonna need the extra damage for it. Just silence control. It's like the Centaur just never can walk himself away. They pull him back in with reality, but they still can't find oh. the kill. <laughs> they had almost 2,000 HP to break through. And yep. Boxy can just tank it out. Centaur Gaming, boys and girls. That here, it's 14 minutes in. He's got something crazy like 3,000 EHP at the moment when you factor in armor and damage block. He blow was... everything from three heroes and it's not nearly... Well, it is nearly enough, but... He had, he had 10 armor and 1990 HP. Decent. Yeah, problem is still for Alliance, you know, the Brood CK, uh, the building damage is what's got to scare you because you know if you make a mistake or two, your supports die, then the wave clear disappears, they can just march down a lane, drop Rasta Wards, Phantasm, and the Brood army all of a sudden just melts your buildings into dust. And RNG also able to utilize Ancients far before Alliances. I think this is the seventh or eighth camp we've seen Setsu take, and that's primarily responsible for his net worth lead on Boxy. Like, there's just no replacement for this super rich camp, by far the most value um, gold per damage required to slay. Actually, well, Creep Waves are technically more value, but there's a limited number of those, of course. Always gonna watch all angles, don't you, Kyle? Alliance are going to push in bottom lane, looking for the tier three, uh, tier one tower. But the pressure will come in return from RNG towards the tier two tower up in the north. And Boxy, he's actually got the Crimson Guard ready to come out in the courier, as well as TP scroll available. So if they want to move towards the north and defend this, they can do so with that plus damage, plus 244. Box is only being slowed up because of this fortification, but this is where Centaur's power really comes to to fruition. But the trade-off is the mass serpent was down. Tiger. We'll delay it with the ET's Domp. Here's your first TP, combining with a splitter. Boxy's gonna arrive, instant Hex from Lanami. You get to come in range of the ET splitter to make that work. And now you have your Arena of Blood. Flyby wants to be able to fight, but does he want to go into this? They've already killed off the ET. Boxy doesn't get bound to... Okay, now he gets bound to Insania, but it's a little too late. Maybe it's not. Stampede, Alliance Retreat. No silence to control that Centaur. But the Tier 2 tower will be guaranteed. Very strange play from Alliance. I think Tiger, the initiation's cool, but when Tiger walks forwards to start auto-attacking, it gets very questionable. And you've got a nice timing spike here. Resetsu with the Diffusal Blade, very powerful. And I do like what Boxy did, however. He's going for the Crimson pre-blink. I think it's necessary. Initiation would be nice, but right now, you don't want to be fighting RNG. They are far too strong, and your cores are just too far behind. Aetherland's picked up on Monom. He's had an excellent game thus far. And it's going to get even better, but uh, you're right with the Crimson Guard, because now where does the damage output come from RNG? Like, it was definitely there. Chaos Knight, like, he, he, his Phantasm and himself won't do as much work. Mm -hmm. Not while that Crimson Guard is up. So they kind of have to wait it out or forever just hold him in the arena yep. of blood. And, and it's one of those... Um, oh, hang on. Nice pickup. Flyby just pushing back this Centaur. They couldn't do it before, even with Crimson Guard triggered. Boxy cannot survive. They're getting stronger. And they're proving it. Alliance just playing two split around the map. They're doing their typical play style where they're in three lanes at once. But RNG, specifically thanks to their supports, they have too much lockdown. Boxy's tanky, but there's no one behind him. So even if it takes 10, 15 seconds, they're still going to be able to burn him down. And I love what RNG is doing. Both cores after the Midas get one value item, the armlet and the defusal, respectively, into straight BKB. They're going to get a Roche, and they're going to look to go try and end game with a couple of pickoffs. And to me, uh, an underrated mechanic, not mechanic really, but just drafting, it goes back to these Ancients. Alliance has had a quad stack this entire game. No one has farmed these Ancients, whereas the Broodmother has cleared his own 10 times. That's that's like a two, 3,000 gold swing that Alliance has no method of gaining at the moment because they don't have a hero that can farm that camp. Why is he going to try and defend this? Boxy's already arrived. They're looking for Monet and Sania waiting right behind. Phantasm. He'll glimpse him back in again. Yep. And the wall, but no, Phantasm dodges it. And then he's still happy to go back in with the Reality Rift, pulling onto the Centaur. Kev with his life to ET Splitter. It does hit hard, and RNG start to back themselves out. It's too much Chain Lightning damage. They get through the CK with a Stampede forward, then over Lanham. 
about time. Pop up the mass serpent wards and the lions find themselves winning a fight for once. Yeah, uh, you got to be careful there. That was a really, it's always an easy play for CK. Anyone worth his salt, and you know, Monet certainly is, is going to be able to Phantasm dodge the glimpse with ease. Uh, one of the easier spells to dodge in that regard. And um, finally, you know, Alliance, they get involved. They have the Veil, they have the Aether Lens on Zeus. His damage output is insane. Um, does the does uh, Tiger have points in Spirit yet? Is my, or not Spirit, but the Aura, because... He's a 3-4-1. He's a okay, because that that's the big power spike for Alliance. When he gets maxed out Aura, and all of a sudden, all magic armor is removed, all base armor is removed, it, it changes the damage output of the Alliance heroes, and all of a sudden, Zeus plus spin is more than enough damage to kill these cores, but that's item. where the BKB becomes a factor. He's itemizing to get there, so he's uh, like he's finishing up the Soul Ring now, so he's got the easy consumables, but he's got Hand of Minus and the Quick Buy for the next item. Mm. So, understanding the levels. Yeah, and, and the high ground really of the Alliance, if you think about it, they, they will be able to stand so far back near almost their own tier fours and, and defend. Like, they're not really pressed for time. They will be able to outscale. It's just that right now RNG is mobilizing for this huge push window at like 20 to 25 minutes. And I feel like they've got control of this game for another 10. Alliance playing for that 30 plus mark where all of a sudden your jug's on the fourth item, your Zeus has the ags, and, and you, you've got the levels necessary to take these big team fights. Fly by with a blink forward, was hoping to get some kind of control on Boxy. Nice Observe Wars has already been planted down. So Alliance as well as RNG have a lot of vision over the hillside. Yeah, dude, these spirits are going to make Taiga so beastly. If he gets a couple of heroes and all these spiders, I'm curious to see how fast he's moving right now. So here come in, he goes from 361 to 485. He's got plus 753 damage. What? Not kidding. It's 85 plus 753 damage. Remember Jesus. there was the buff up for the hero, like the hero gain damage? It was an army of spiders, but this is yeah, it was not all, all according to plan. You Roshan. get the bounty runes top on RNG, you immediately move into Roche, and what do you know, a very timely DD rune just outside of the pit. This is a tough <laughs> fight for Alliance to take here. They're thinking about it, though, but Boxy, I don't know if he's tanky enough to make this play by himself. The ET Spirit's going to have a look. So it can slow him down. Setsu, with the double damage, they need to stomp just to delay it up, but Setsu just walks himself out of the pit, so Roshan's the only one that gets stunned up. Wards are fading, though. You could think about this, Alliance. He's Do almost there. Steal? Plague Wards have just a little bit longer, but they'll be long enough. Spirit comes back in again. Roshan killed by Radiant. Yes. They've already got the Aegis Immortal. On to the Brood Mother. And Flyby just separates the team fight. Boxy, no way he can get back in. The Arena of Blood is to take so long to walk around the Coliseum. Tiger will finish his own TP away to safety, but they're keeping the chase going. Insania at the Tier 2 Tower. He just wants to get Invis, but they want Koifa. Drops down the Lightning Bolt. He'll need some extra help. Insania, what are you going to give? He has the ultimate. He'll give nothing. They'll just let Koifa die. And in fact, with a follow-up Hex, the RNG just keep going. They want to, but Tiger, a three-man sleep. They're doing our creep wave. It's still back by their own dead Tier 1. And Man, I, I hate to see that, Toby. It's like the most frustrating way to take a Roche fight is that you initiate late. Not even initiate. Roche is dead, but you're now like, oh, wait, shit, we got to get out of here. But you lose two for, for nothing. They've yep. already taken the big objective. You've had Mickey TP from where he was farming safely in the aggressive offlane back to just watch and then retreat into his own jungle again. It, it just... A big miscue there from Alliance, and it's put them in a whole 10k lead now in favor of RNG. And we were talking about the power spike, this double BKB. It's it's very tough for Alliance to do anything. The Insania Disruptor, ineffective at the moment. Yeah. And, and they need more time. They're really trying to find ways where they, where they can counter push, as you said. like So Alliance can buy that time. The ET Spirit slows everything down. And if they do want to run in closer onto onto Tiger, like he brings that spirit back every time, and he's always around plus 600 to plus 700 damage mm. on the ET. He will hit hard if he can survive. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the big problem because both Brood and CK also hit quite hard, and they don't need a spirit to do it. He actually switched off. He's uh, not going the mice, going the yeah BKB. I think Tiger's turning, like realizing he has to turn into the fighter. Another mass left and more committed, so the tier two tower will end up falling. Or, or Top is tower is the trade-off from Mickey working with the catapult wave. That being very uncertain about things. Lanham's moving up. Dyer will still claim the top tower. Oh, I don't know about this item of course, but I think you need an Ags ASAP. You gotta be able to kill these supports in the back line. Yeah, blink Dyer, What's course. he looking for? Is this like a jump out positioning yeah, he, when RNG initiate? He wants to kite, because right now the only initiation RNG have is still walk at you, although I do believe they'll have a blink on Mars. Uh, it's just what 
what sort of damage you're going to do. That's the problem. Insane. He actually got the kinetic field up, so Shaman's forced to stand here with Mikke. You can find the quick kill. Rotation's coming in from Mars. And Mikke, what are you going to do? He's actually going to farm the wave up. He's got spin TP available, but here comes Flyby. The spin not being used to TP away to safety because they want to try and fight oh. him, and that's the reason why Boxy jumps in. You can go for the quick Omni Slash. Fire by the only thing that's kept him alive. Actually, they glimpse him back. What's better? An arena of blood or a kinetic field? At this point, the kinetic field is doing the work. A nice skewer pushing Mickey further away, but Flyby will still end up going down. The creep wave gets the last hit. An alliance well, making RNG feel like they have the upper hand. Yeah, that. That was a great play. Like, that's yeah. the sort of move you've got to make in this position. You don't want to sit in your own base. You've got to play aggressively. They do it with three and bait RNG into an overconfident move. Mars finishes the bl uh, the pipe post blink, and you could see the brood item choice. The Aghanim Scepter doubles the active web count, so he'll have insane mobility. Does mean his damage output will decrease ever so slightly in comparison to if he'd rushed an aura item like AC. Yeah. But it looks like RNG is trying to abuse map control and pace. They, you notice they haven't really, there have been no huge 5 on 5s, and the only one we really had was around that bottom tier 1, and Alliance won that. They want to abuse movement and pickoffs to get their advantage. Boxy's on the run. <laughs> Not the fight he wanted to have, but Mars did TP over towards the shrine for this. So they are relying, like, maybe this is also a mindset we have to start thinking about for RNG. Like, okay, well, the Broodmother's building the Aghanim Scepter, so it's just like, I need to control every single lane, cut it out, but what is the end goal with this? Eventually, RNG have to go high ground. And they've got 57 seconds left on that Aegis the Immortal to do it. Yep, and looks like it might be coming right about now, Toby. Almost level 20 on Setsu. Monet has that Blink BKB. Bounty Rings have spawned. Looks like it'll be a two for two trade, which has got to favor Alliance in this spot. Still behind, but it was 10k five minutes ago, and they've outlasted this Aegis without losing any structures that weren't certainly going to die anyway. And they've actually gained just a little bit of ground. And I like that they're still playing in this top side of the map. They have to. You want to try and keep RNG split, but you notice there's still a Centaur and a Zeus inside the base because they recognize the push power if RNG just showed up on high ground with yep. all their heroes dropping spells. Yeah, they have to hold them out. Interesting pickup as uh, looks like he got a little bit more frustrated dropping down mass sentry was a gem picked up by the Grimstroke. 25 okay. minutes in while the Hex connects onto middle with the very long shackles. Monet looking for his own target, but the blink away to safety is going to help. Boxy has no stampede. He used it previously to escape, but he's got a stomp available. And now finally they get through him. Setsu's the man to get the kill. The Aegis Immortal will time out. Not to mention the BKB burned on the Broodmother. It's just too far outside of base, and it's so easy for RNG. You could see Lana with the long range shackle. It's what, like five seconds, even though it's only level three? There's nothing you can do about it. And he comes and quick. He's BTing yeah. around the map. I like, it, it's mobility. That's what RNG's looking to do. They don't want five on fives. They want to see, oh, Boxy out of position, like that three, four seconds away from his team. We'll just initiate on him, abuse our initiation, our reach, and our ability to just. Uh, guerrilla style alliance into submission, forcing them to stay now behind their tier two bottom side as they continue to farm in three places at once. Oh, they can't do this though. Like they're going to lose their entire jungle worth of farm. The top wave is going to push in so heavily as well. Like, Mikke feels like he's the bait. Insania's winning the trees, and he walks right on top of Monet. Instantly, BKBs is only going to get by any kind of storm or war and just rips apart Insania. That is one very dead raptor. And Mickey TP now comes off cooldown so he can leave. He's got to be careful. Lanham is looking for him. He wants to spin the next wave. Yeah, he does. But if he gets hexed, he's super dead. Lanham finds him. Does he get the hex off? Spin. Mickey. Yeah, he just TPs. Doesn't get the wave. And already the Chaos Knight's got his Phantasm Illusions arriving on bottom. Yeah, Orange is playing a really clean game this far. Just avoiding fights. Ensuring that they're always farming these double an these ancient camp spawns while keeping Alliance locked on their own side of the map. Uh, I still think Alliance, if they can buy more time, if they can get later into this game, try and even up this net worth disparity, then things will change. But they've got to try and equalize the, 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 the macro part of this game right now because RNG's advantage is growing by 500 to 1,000 every minute because Alliance is unable to play more than one lane at a time. Yeah. So that's when you look to see RNG push. Uh, if they look at towards the top river, they'll see a double damage rune. It's been sitting there for a while. In fact, if they don't get it in the next 10, it's uh, kind of gone. Oh, and but they may not need it. The wrap up towards top, Mickey. Triggers at the Mjolnir. Insania is going to be the one to be caught out. He tries to go invis quickly with Glimmer Clay. Monet jumps in. Remember, they got the Gem of True Sight. So they see absolutely everything. The rest of Alliance will TP out. That ward just out of range. 
Couldn't see Coit for TPing out. Yep. Map control is the name of the game for RNG. I love how they've played this so far. Double blink in that mm -hmm. top side shop area. So you want to ensure that you can continue to push this top lane since Brood has bottom and mid. And oh, nice kill there from Mickey. Just hiding in the trees. Gets the Omni off before the Hex can come out to Lana. He'll mid. take that, but Tiger's in trouble. Stampede comes in and with the Hopes on forward, oh, they actually catch Whoa. Brood Mother. Wow. That was a ton of damage. Oh my god. And the that's, TP out to safety as well. Yeah, they hit hard. That's the ET Zeus factor right there. When Brood <laughs> is isolated, not near the pipe aura, he's taking pure damage from Zeus's spells. Not to mention the double edge of Centaur. There's actually a ton of magical damage. And Taiga with the great stomp, ensuring he keeps his spirit online as well. Like you just you will not survive if you get stunned pre-BKB with no supports around you. That'll be a Lotus finished up on Box. That was, that was such a huge was kill that. because it slows down the tempo of RNG. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about, oh, how does Alliance get back on the map? How do they establish vision? Well, with two heroes dead on the enemy side, look at how aggressive they, they can suddenly play. They don't even need to necessarily stay here, but they can at least establish some sort of map control and get the lanes finally on the RNG side of the river. It's this Alliance's mindset change. It kind of goes with Tiger's like, quick buy change. He went from, it's like, okay, oh, I need Hand of Myers, I need to get my levels. Now I went to BKB. Now he's looking at Agony. Scepter, so yep. just gonna put that ogre club into the ags. And this, you know, it's starting to question if RNG has played this game perhaps too passively. They could have been <laughs> jumping. <laughs> don't, don't go down this line again. We had this line with the EG game, didn't we? Well, it, this, it's like this game looks really good. They're very much ahead in net worth, but it is. But don't be passive. They, they, the first Aegis, they didn't even like make a move with it. They found some kills, but Alliance were able to keep the game even in terms of the net worth not changing too much, and. You had this ability to potentially play on one side of the map with three, four heroes as Brood just dives into the bottom area or bottom racks, mid racks, something like this. And I think Alliance will just give up this Roche. They may not even be aware it's active because both bounty runes are spawning. Especially the Zeus being hunted up on top, blinks away quickly thanks to the Thunder God's Wrath. Gives information that Roshan's being dumb, but it, yeah, as you said, like Alliance, they're in no position to try and contest this at all. They have to wait. They can look for a trade-off, so the double damage for the Juggernaut, Tier 2 Town to bottom lane. But Initiation's getting better and better for Roll Never Give Up. That's Lanham who just arrived with a fresh Blink Dagger, starts with a Hex. Look at the range! No, but... Holding him with the Shackles, you throw him into the wall, no way to bounce away from this one. And that is one very dead Juggernaut, DD or not, with no buyback available for 72 seconds. Chasing. And they're looking for Boxy in the trees, he'll blink down and away. Nice and elusive. So RNG won't find him. Tiger barely gets his own TP out in time. And uh, this this is go time for RNG. They've got the second Aegis. The Assault Cure has finished on Brood. He's near six slotted. He's got the He's cheese in his back end too. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is when you are strongest as Broodmother, but your hero, much like an alchemist, you will fall off. You're, you're supposed to win games around this mark. If Alliance can hold on for five, ten more minutes, they'll be in a great spot, but it's looking dangerous. Mickey dead for 40 seconds. Wards are active. RNG have all their spells. Like, at any moment, they could, just, they could just go high ground right now and They're drop going. everything. Brood's heading in. They've got double blink daggers coming on the current Dude, tomorrow, but that's coming in for the Grimstroke. But Aghanim Scepter will be completed from Tiger. He'll buy out for this. Because they have only the CK with buyback status available. Look at CK. So quickly in, Tiger gets... Oh, they got the stop. Actually, Brood's going to be in trouble here. Yeah, BKB up and running. He'll be able to survive. Yeah. Immunity up. Zeus, Dota 2, folks. It doesn't matter if he's low in net worth, he's still doing tons of damage. Oh, there's your soul bind and the double silence. Tiger goes back into the stomp using that immunity he has, but he can't really help out. The shackles will hold him there. And this is Alliance with two heroes, no buyback. One of them being the core. Monet will be close back in again. Boxy and Mickey won't try and fight, but the Arena of Blood will arrive. And Mickey and Boxy have to fight right on the edge of it. Skew it back in towards the tower. Mickey can only spin himself back away. And maybe with the stampede, Boxy actually decides to turn. But the tier 3 tower's already fallen. The melee rax is following quickly too. Now Serpent wants just to add insult to injury. This will be able to finish up the range rax. And there's nothing Lions can do about it. 32 minutes in, they've lost their mid. It looks like Koifa got caught with the soul bind. Could no longer blink away. Was counting on his mobility to survive, but instead just ends up getting dove hard by the double BKB pop of the 1 and 2 of RNG. And there's nothing you can do as a Zeus with this very mobile but squishy itemization. In fact, there are really no items you can buy. If you get jumped on by CK and Brood, you will die. He actually needs, I think, a BKB in this game if he wants to survive. But that's, that's a tall task when you consider he's currently sitting at, what, like 300 gold? Mm-hmm. It's what's, kind of fun. The, what's the ET Ags? So, ET Ags will give you two seconds magic immunity while you're channeling Stomp. 
So that's why it's looking like he has huh. a BKB. Uh, it's no longer like um, like the big hitter with the splitter. Yeah, the, that was one that was changed, right? Because he had mm -hmm. one before. I didn't yeah, he did. Change it too. I think it's um, didn't it disarm when he got the Agadim scepter yeah, with the old yeah, ET? Did. And I think it lasted one second longer as well, or the debuff did. Yeah, but now it's like, oh, you can stomp, um, but it will be, yeah, two seconds immunity for an 11 second cooldown ability. That's pretty cool, actually, because there's a ton of mini stun and interrupt on RNG. Although, I don't think you can cast Stomp <laughs> while you're silenced, right? You have to... You can't cast it unless... They, they silenced him then, uh, but he, I still saw him cast Stomp, so... No, but it maybe it's questionable. Oh, oh, stomp into the Omni Science, looking for the damage to kill the Brood Mother, able to do so. Setsu falls down to Boxy. No. Now, Alliance, they, they just need that one opening right now. That's another They're going pretty again. large mistake from Setsu. They're going to keep chasing. This is the Disruptor Factor. You have a ton of catch, and they have this vision on the high ground. This might be plus one. They want the CK. Stampede. They're coming closer. The Glimmer Cape helping protect Afu for the moment. And they got the vision. The CK, he'll have to be KB. That's his seven second down. It's the right move. No Phantasm for a little bit, and he's holding 5k gold. RNG still in the lead, but it's... He's been sitting like this ever since they took Roshan, because originally he had the Assault Curus queued up, ready to buy, and he switched back into the Scotty. That's... Mm. You're not out of the woods here, the RNG. They, they have the, the advantage necessary to maintain the lead, but the Alliance draft is nice in the sense that they really just need that one decisive team fight, that one Roshan, if they can either uh, deny the Aegis Refresher or take it themselves, like that totally turns this game in their favor. You know, Mars is great hero, but you start falling off in terms of overall damage output when comparing them to what ended up being the offlaner for Alliance uh, in the Zeus. Shiva's soon on Boxy as well, just trying to reduce damage output. Nice ulti, mm. they'll find the smoke. And look yeah. at the vision Alliance suddenly have. Even though they lost the racks, it feels like their <laughs> map controls actually increased <laughs> substantially. They've been banking the wards just forever. Fly by. Oh no, that's a huge miss on the spear. Into a Glimmer Cape, up back underneath the shrine. They'll need to trigger this right now to give him the extra life. Won't be enough, however. A flyby. Thanks about continuously fighting, especially when Mona jumps forward. A four second stun over on Tiger. Even if he stomps right now, he'll get the immunity, pull him back in again. So the stomp will connect, but Mona won't care. The BKB protects him. Lotus can help reflect. But down goes the ET. The pressure is still being applied up on top yep. lane. The Juggernaut took the tier two tower. And they got the lanes going, so they may need a buyback on the Elder Titan, but because it's just the supports that they lose, you notice the gold swing actually favors Alliance after that engagement, thanks to the tower and the amount of creeps that Mickey was able to slay. Because RNG is so far ahead, if you look at the net worths, you're not getting any of that uh, differential bonus gold. So really, supports dying doesn't matter if you're Alliance, so long as you preserve your structures, which so far they're able to do. Uh, Scotty complete on the CK. Looks like he's going Moonshard next item. But... Keep in mind, like, the RNG cores are starting to max out. And obviously Mars can buy more items, but the Brood and the CK will soon be out of slots. Oh, BK, okay. do not blink up that hill. Uh, <laughs> with the Shrines being attacked, he understands that's not the place to be anyway. Yeah. Well, he's been the elusive one on the northern side. With both Manta as well as Blink Dagger, he's able to push out the lanes. Afu, quick blink away from Mikkei. Afu was right behind him, starts his own spin TP out, and this is why Mikkei is the one doing it. Elusive enough when you've got the Manta as well as Blink, but... Having nothing that's going to actually pierce you through the immunity, apart from heavy physical damage, that allows the TP out. Yeah, the next big fight is going to be the fight for the third Roshan. That is game-breaking. Um, I don't think... There's no real, like, huge items that'll change things too much. I feel like a butterfly on Mickey would be sick just because there's no MKBs just yet on the RNG cores. And while they could buy one on the Brood, it's very tough for CK to get one at this point. He's just over-slotted. Uh, Aegis can spawn between like one and a half, four and a half minutes from now, so should expect a little bit of passivity. Brood doesn't actually have anything in her quick buy at the moment. Just keep mind, four, this, just 4.2k gold. <laughs> this game has huge TI implications. It is oh, a yeah. BO3 series. If Alliance win this, they are almost guaranteed to go to TI. I do believe, mm -hmm. although Gambit could overtake them if they were to win their next two series. Yep. Um, and RNG, if they can win this and then win their next series as well, they are guaranteed that TI invite. Yeah, but they have, they have to win both those series because they're so far behind. Initiation onto the middle, Lotus will try and protect Boxy, but uh, BKB Setsu just waits it out, has all the damage. Flyby actually burning his own BKB and the Arena of Blood to ensure this kill. 
Yeah, that's their dangerous target. You want to be able to kill whoever you can, of course, but if you initiate on Centaur and Alliance are in the vicinity, you can potentially throw a fight because you're burning all these spells and putting yourselves in a choke point position. But they're still losing out on the push power. Mm -hmm. Like, Disruptor's holding the top lane with the ET. Oh, but look You've at this. got Zeus this pushing the, the bottom. bottom. And it's going to go the way, Jug. This is sick. This could be an opening for Alliance. Perhaps he just uses it to push down bottom lane. It looks like that'll be the case. They're scanning on Roshan. Now, Roshan may respawn in two seconds' time. We'll get the quick counter on you. And uh, I can tell you right now, it's oh, 138. Yeah. So it's, it's a longer spawn time for RNG. I love how Lanham is there, just in case it's the instant spawn, and then he moves away. That's really cool. He's obviously got the timer down. Something that you would think every team would do regularly, but you'd be surprised how many times that can get lost in translation, especially this late into a critical must-win game. It is so funny watching Koifer play this high movement speed Zeus, going BTs now with the uh, Sun, uh, the Yashikaya. Mm. No Aghanim Scepter on the Zeus, which is what you thought you were going to get. I, I, kind of in retrospect, push. I think that that's the right call because... It, it hits units, right? I think I don't. I'm not sure if it prioritizes heroes or not, but if it doesn't, then it would most likely end up just hitting spiders. <laughs> oh, Lana! Wow. He's got no defensive item. Really well done once again by Mickey. But that's all set up because of the wards they were able to Offer. place earlier. Looks for the spin. Uh, looks for the sun, but Mickey's got the spin and TP away to safety. That's the second time that Mickey's just gone for that solo Omni slash kill, and he's. Getting more and more items, man. He's playing this better than most people would play the anti mage in the oh, back lines, but now they get the, the animation towards the mid. The damage on the broom mother, you'll get the arena of blood up, and then the skewer pushing the centaur back out. Flyby, that BKB won't last much longer. He's been burning it so much already. He'll get up the ramp and away, but Alliance, two heroes from RNG are in the in the grave, and they have no buybacks available. Because you bought he the nullifier on the brood mother. That's why there's no buyback. They can go for Roshan. He's up in six seconds. This if Alliance I, check it in five, they're going to be good. It, and they left the healing ward there. You, you, you're at a point now as Alliance. Like, yeah, sure, you'd love to be able to get some base damage, but you get four bounties and the Roche spawn. And that's even off. better. A refresher shard. Like, this is the dream. This is the absolute dream. And you can see that as this game has gotten late, like, sure, Brood is farmed. He's six-slotted. But mm -hmm. a stun, a stomp, and two rounds of Zeus spells, he explodes. Radina scanning. They understand what's, what's currently happening. But they're moving towards the bottom lane instead. They're not going to contest Roshan without the Broodmother. And maybe this is the right choice for them at the end of the day. It's definitely the right choice. You cannot take this fight without Setsu. Top net worth on your team. And they, ha they were lacking the big ultimates as well. Now. Uh, yes, sure, the net worth at disadvantage hasn't changed, but wasn't it about 10k at 20 minutes? It's mm -hmm. proportionally way better for Alliance now that it's still near the same, but it, it's so much later that the, the actual percentage difference is, is negligible. You're, you're so powerful now as Alliance. Mickey is approaching number one net worth, and your draft does outscale. That's what we've been saying all game. It just can yep. you hold on. And RNG, they really just not made plays. It's tough with their draft. They can't take these team fights. They're trying to abuse this map mobility, but at a point, because of this vision, because you make that mistake, brood diving base getting picked off. Yeah. Alliance establishing vision around the map. Like, that is the key to this game. The wards are an objective in and of themselves. Once those go down, it opened up the game for Mikke, could find solo kills, can push lanes more aggressively, and still be able to spin TP out successfully because there's no abyssal blade. There's no method of canceling that still on the whole draft of RNG. And we're seeing them try now increase the survivability. Level 25 talent arrives at 600 plus health now for the Juggernaut. Um, but you're getting an Aghanim Scepter. Zeus did end up going back into it. So they'll have that AoE level of control to go with the ET, smoke up, the spirit walks right over the top of him and they'll want to follow that one back, but the Hex in middle lane, that long range initiation, but oh, Bobsy, double the double stun, it won't work, only one of them got the BKB up in time, but Mickey to the back lines again, look at his control up, Lanham, and take away that, but he does, goes in Viz, the Glimmer Cave offers the protection, Omni Slash, Damage. everyone too grouped up to get the Sensu and they're going down, he'll get hit by the Lightning Ball while Mone took the rest of the Omni Slash from Mickey, Afu is nearby, can they actually see him, Sentry will play to see which way he goes, and they will find this kill, even with the bash, Mickey gets himself a double kill, a very quick buyback in from Mona. Dude. He needs to defend the top lane, which had momentum, but Alliance... I, I think they're done for, Toby. You, you can see the damage <laughs> output. It is shifted just completely in favor of Alliance, and they don't need to fear anything any longer. There's a buyback on the CK, sure, mm -hmm. but for what... Like, you don't have Phantasm. What, do, what are you going to actually do here? Mickey is enormous, and even without Omni Slash, he's going to have MKB coming on the Courier in a moment, and just... 
that 15,000 golden experience advantage that RNG is walking, walking around with uh, is now just totally shifted. And that's and all happened within the span of the last five, five to ten minutes. That's that window that Alliance has just been waiting for. Dude, and Tiger, this is ET, guys. This hero <laughs> is the ultimate damage amplification in Dota at the moment. That does seem to be the name of the game. Another Lotus Orb picked up, just neutralizing Lanham's effectiveness in this game. He's no longer going to be able to find that easy lockdown on these cores. Mm -hmm. You're going to actually have to five on five and go toe to toe with the Alliance damage output. And you just don't have that right now. Man, this, this actually feels really sad for Royal ne Never Give Up. Like they looked like they're off to a fantastic start. The lanes were fantastic. Mm. The the draft really worked for them when that fifth pick Broodmother. But the if, draft is great. But if, if it tails off like this, you there needs there needs to be a, a, a win condition, like a plan well, it, for it's, win it's timing. It's more I think that they're just not using the map control they have to press their advantage. They need to take, you know, maybe not super risks, but at least a couple calculated ones. You watch OG play in the series before this. When they get this lead, it feels like you give OG a lead. They'll take it and win the game mm -hmm. almost every time just because they continue to push the envelope. Yeah, sure, you might die here and there as Thompson or as support, but it's the three or four heroes. You're on the enemy side of the map, and you have other teammates making things happen or, or in the other lanes, whereas RNG, they... Oh, Mickey, don't walk up there. He's going to be in real trouble. Has the Aegis Simona for a minute and a half. Box He's waiting for the right time to initiate. There's two heroes who did not burn their BKB. Setsu and Mone waiting for the right time and they hit the back lines. Under saying ET Tiger was there waiting to initiate in himself. They'll battle inside the arena of blood. Mikke, the spin's actually negating most of this soulbind timing effect. And maybe they got another one. Double yeah, hold him with the double shackles. They hold him there for the moment underneath the Nimbus. They don't care. Alliance, they are dying in front of Roshan for no primary objective apart from giving RNG a second chance to push high ground. And Lanham. My God, this guy, he got the double shackle, the long range initiation and RNG hitting the back line. They knew where Alliance was sitting in the river. Their feet were wet. But that only works because Mickey is walking up. God, I feel like I'm watching. Yeah, an the, Alliance this. game. You feel like you're watching an Alliance game, Kyle. What's the longest running sitcom? Because Alliance and moves like that have got to have more episodes. Uh, side, They're still in a final field, position. I think would have to be number one up there, uh, I think. Now there's a... Or be like, if it's a soap, then it's like days of our lives. And it does feel like you do have the emotional up and downs of a soap opera. I think that would be more accurate. They'll never find out. Just keep a secret. Secrets are always kept. Mickey buys back the left high up in a moment as well. You can see RNG still fearful, especially with no phantasm. It's mm -hmm. like that was a that was a gift. Alliance, you know what? We were this game was a lot easier when we were ten thousand gold behind. So let's get back to that. Uh -huh. You're gonna have RNG scoop up more bounty runes and the tomes coming out now. You got buyback CD on Jug and CK and Grimstroke. Mm-hmm. Koifa level 25 along with the Ag, so he's his damage build, output is insane. But he's actually building a refresher orb. Yeah. All, all Lions need to do is take a fight, force the BKBs on RNG, Koifa stays alive. He'll be able to kill almost everybody so long as Boxy and specifically Mickey gets their spells off. And oh, that TP Ooh. took forever to go Ooh. back to Fountain. <laughs> but he's there. He is there safely. You have an Ag soon on Insania, though. That's enormous, because you can be able to initiate then with Boxy um, and just drop the ult. There's no save mechanics that can come out. You cannot BKB. You cannot that's, use that's, your ability. You cannot the pass go. Like, like you saw Boxy waiting. Two heroes standing together. They hadn't used their BKBs, but still they didn't want to initiate. I don't know if that was because Alliance weren't sure they wanted the initiation, but it also could have been because he's like, you know what, if I blink in, they're already going to BKB on me. That's true, but you could argue that would be better off for them. It yeah. just, it, Boxy can die. Like, In fact, I feel like if Boxy dies in a fight, Alliance have won it, so long as they're actually five heroes, because RNG simply don't have enough time in these fights to win them unless they get the supports and chase away the Zeus and or Mickey, uh, or, or just take one of them down. But long fights favor Alliance. RNG, you've got to win in the duration of your BKBs, your Brood, and your CK ultimates. If you give Zeus enough time to get two or three uh, rounds of spells off, like, you're mm -hmm. just, you're done for. Uh, prepare yourself for a lot of rebuking. Uh, Mars is building into an Agadim Scepter. Of course he is. <laughs> so 1.4 second cooldown on the Agadims for rebuke. Plus he gets an extra damage against heroes. They're looking for their target, Boxy. 
Oh, smoke's gonna break. They know someone's hovering around, but this is definitely Alliance using him as bait. And it's a very, very tanky centaur that they'd have to fight through. 42 armor, 3k in a bit. Yeah. Worth of, worth of life. No, he is not the target for RNG, and they recognize this. Next Aegis does feel like it might be the big objective. Alliance moving out on the map towards their own jungle bottom. Well, there's, there's the damage output you want. There's a double damage rune sitting in the top river. But, uh, so Roshan may respawn in 30 seconds. It'll be our, our new timer to watch. And then you're going to have Setsu maxed out quite soon. He'll sell the Midas for the Bloodthorn, and then his damage output is truly peaked. Could always buy a Moon Shard, of course, but you know, this is about as good to get as it gets for a Brood in terms of late game itemization. I really like the Ags as well. I feel like this was a necessary quality of life change to make him viable into this phase of the game. Because old Brood, you wouldn't have the webs to actually play Dota 2. You'd pick like one little area of the map, whereas now Setsu has that freedom to be effectively everywhere just thanks to this... Uh, this new ad from our great frog leader. Giving some level of presence. So Roshan will respawn as a quick one, 30 seconds, before he'll be up. And RNG, because they've established a little bit more of a pushback in mid. That's the advantage of having that earlier Rax go down. Mm. They've always got Alliance having to show themselves. Yep. So they'll see a little bit more, but the Aghanim Scepter for Disruptor, so he doesn't care about buyback. He's short of it by about 650 yep. gold. This is where I'd love to see Alliance just simplify things. Just initiate on someone with the whole team nearby, kill that guy, and then look to just team fight. Because if they look to just mono -e mono brute force their way through RNG, I, I believe it will succeed, and I hope that that's their come. play right now. Well, they're, they're, they're pulling the Chinese strat. Smoke up with uh, one in front, four Ooh. behind. Uh, yeah, quick pause. Mm. So RNG can feel where everything is, but you don't have any vision from Alliance right now. Like, Dire side vision is, well, yeah. pretty much non existent. But you just need to get your spells off. Your damage output is far superior. Oh, we'll see where they can jump in. The ET Spirit's doing the scouting for them. Line them down the river. Monet's up high. He'll want to blink himself straight in the middle of the fight with the BKBs up. A nice four seconds done is out on Disruptor. And there goes that Aghanim Scepter. They really needed to give the control and the fights and the shackles. Pulling back the Centaur with the spear into the trees. The perfect chain stuns from RNG. They'll lose the Grimstroke. But my god, are they going to rip up a hell of a lot of damage? Plus 80 on the God's Rebuke with the Aghanim's upgrade that you're going to get. Mars is going to hit hard. Back on Boxer, they want to fight this because Mickey picked up a DD. He's going to run straight towards the pit. They want to have Disruptor, though, along no Afu. So four on four. They got to get to this pit quick. The Nimbus gives the information. Here comes your spirit. Sees Morinay looking for the stomp. It's a little bit too early. Yeah, insane has got to be just a little more cautious. That Wait, is... Do they force the... they got to force Roshan, right? Like, Mickey's got to go in to do this. Nah, you, you, I think you stall here. You don't need this. Oh, there's no, do the there's, no, there's no Phantasm. There's no Mass Serpent Wards, and True. there's no Grimstroke mm -hmm. at the moment. Boxy just has to babysit him with the ET Spirit. Sensu can come a little bit closer again. A little bit premature on the stomp, but that's why they jump in. Two seconds on with their Arena of Blood. Flyby, he does so much damage. Mickey wants to run himself away from this one with the spinning on the wall, but not in enough time. Juggernaut's dead for two minutes, and what have they really got? Oh, they're going to Courier to come and try and fight for them. That's what they've got. Maybe they've got some extra life with Boxy. Tank him through it, but Setsu still up. They buy a the little bit more Koifa. space. And they can't get the kill. Koifa's trying his hard out to get the kill, but Lana moves forward under the cover of Glimmer Cave, working with Morino. Morino is at four seconds done. Two different ways. Maybe with the ET stop, more space can be created, allowing Alliance to Ooh. reset themselves back in again. Flyby, he's pulled back down by the Glimpse. They get the kill over on to the Mars. Bye but Morino's doing the work with the buybacks coming thick and fast from RNG, as well as Alliance. The BT oh, the front lines, TV. they've always got to be there to get the kills. Maybe with the hoof stomp from Boxy, they keep the control up. Can they get this kill? Morino's so low. He's envious. He's running up the hill, but Tiger being chased down by the Insania. He gets the wall as well as the storm mount. The two calls from RNG, they could not keep the chase going. Maybe with the dust, Tiger goes into another stop, but he'll die first. They switch targets just at the right time. Sensu has himself a double kill. They want to finish up Boxy. Diffuser Blade will slow him up in the mass urban ones. Well, they can't hold him in, but they just rebuke and rebuke and then find the kill. A triple kill for Sensu. They're about to make it an ultra kill as Insania will fall as well. The buybacks from Alliance are there, but all they can do is just delay RNG's push. They can't stop it. 
You're taking that fight without Mick Gay. Tobes, I know you want to buy back. You want to get these fights, but it's RNG just playing so well. Both Lanham and Monet on the CK are just hunting. They're waiting for the Zeus to show himself, and immediately you see him get stunned out. Then all of a sudden, he's got to play and, and fight, flee for his life, effectively, and they just chase him down. It's You're only a threat if you're able to continuously cast spells, and Koivich is not able to do so. I, again, it's just a lie. They don't... <laughs> They're only losing these fights because they're not getting their spells off. It's like three fights in a row. I don't see an Omni Slash. It's but just, it's not okay. But you're watching RNG not trying to force any buybacks. Like, there's death timers which last forever. The, yeah, they don't have there a There are no buybacks. Lot, but, um, yeah, it's like they use four of their own. I can't believe they're not going for the game here. It's, yeah, that's what I thought as well. Like, they like, like they took a bottom lane of Rax and they'll come back and finish up Roshan. The, the thing is, this... I don't think this helps RNG enough. They, they want to be able to get Megas here and close the game. But realistically... The Aegis, like, because everyone's so slotted at the moment... ET Spirit's coming in. Roshan's not dead just yet. If he stomps right now, he may be able to. No, they're gonna double PKP. Grab everything you've got. Thing is, if you look, like, you won't have the Bloodthorn now. It's not a huge deal set to. He just drops the Midas, obviously, for the Aegis. But, you know, if Alliance can just, can just get their spells off... I think that they're still in a position to win this game. It's just that RNG has consistently outplayed them in these late game fights. You know, Insania, I think, has yet to... He got an Ag's ult off after his respawn in that previous fight. But he just hasn't been able to find an opening in the engagements like Lanham has, who continuously seems to be responsible for every single kill that his squad finds on one of these Alliance cores. So Brood is actually, wait, he, he consumed the Aghanim Scepter and then sold his Aghanim Scepter. So okay. He, he didn't actually I give like it to that. anyone. I like that a lot, actually, because he you needs do? the slots. Yeah. But you, you wouldn't, like, just give an Aghanim Scepter up because it was the Aghanim Scepter upgrade from Roshan. It's, it's, you need the slots. Like, that's the problem with the Brood hero is that if you have this Ags, I love it. You need it to give you the necessary mobility to actually be a Dota hero at this phase of the game, but he needs to have a Bloodthorn in slot right now mm -hmm. with the Aegis if he wants to deal damage and fight. That was This kind of gives that Aegis far more meaning because he's actually going to have the damage output to ensure that Alliance cannot ignore his hero. He's very squishy though, 2100 <laughs> HP, one round of spells from Koifa, and he'll be at like 300, 400 health. It's oh, just, he's going to be my number one to watch. But remember, yeah. he's also got buyback available. Both him and as well as Juggernaut Mickey has buyback coming into he, this fight. He's got to be really careful, too, because if he dies once, Insania, if nearby, can just drop his ulti on the Aegis Respawn. He'll die again, no question, because mm -hmm. he'll be locked inside with no ability to BKB or ultimate. It's just it, Alliance, they just got to get their spells off. They got to find the initiation, or at the very least, ensure one of their cores does not die without casting a spell. Look at this from Monet. Or he just wants to. The 55-minute boundary is picked up at the bottom yep. lane as well as the mid are, pu uh, are pushing in. Alliance have to retreat at this point. I love his itemization, too. He recognizes how important it is to get these catches. So he goes for the Shadow Blade after Blink. That's why he's able to find the back line. It's helped him kill Taiga once, Insania twice, and Koifa after his buyback and that last engagement. And they just continue to hunt. Oh, here comes Alliance. They ain't backing up. There's one hero who's at base doing the defense work, but Boxy, the Lotus Orb, trying to protect him for the moment. I like it's, what they're uh, doing It's Koi for who's the one who's at home. They don't have the Zeus yeah. with him on the front lines. They, they don't need him, though. He's always got the teleport active. Just camp this high ground like they're doing and look for the initiation. Mickey, though, Brood. please be cautious. He's walking up the hill. Hop stop already comes out. Maybe they can get the kill over on Flyby, but then Soulbind. Mickey's going to try and spit it off. The ET Splitter holding him in position. And Mars is dying quickly. He doesn't have buyback. Dead for two minutes. Alliance have the advantage of the glimpse. That's not the way they thought Lanham was going to go. But the Master Seven Wards would drop, be mopped up, but the waves, they need to get control of these lanes again, Alliance. Yep. And you can see, you can see exactly how these fights are going. RNG, if they don't get that catch, if they don't ensure they can prevent some core of Alliance from getting spells off, they don't have that ability to just go toe to toe. They can't initiate like, Monet can't just walk forwards and be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the centaur. I'll go for Mickey now, because it's just, you just don't have the damage. I love how Eliza are like, okay, well, you've got Mone, but I don't want him. Yeah. But maybe they do next time. The blink decker gets picked over on Insania. So he's got that ability just to instant jump and yes. get that disabled through items. Like it's, It won't care about the items. Yep. And they should know if they were keeping track. There's been a ton of buybacks. It's, remember, 56 minutes into the game, both of these teams are playing for a TI direct invite. Yep. Immense pressure in this moment. It's easy to forget things like who, you know, <laughs> who bought back in that last fight? Was it five minutes? Was it six? Mm -hmm. So they should know it's a four on five. So they're trying, well, they don't try and force it. They try and get at least a counteract at this point. 
Monet is waiting on the bottom lane for someone to come and defend it. You've got Broodmother pushing top lane with Grimstroke. He's, he's so no one's closer. here to try and stop Alliance from doing the push, which you can understand, like, it's, it's Shaman. That's the only one, but the Lotus Orb will protect Mikke. So he doesn't care. They'll take the tower. Here comes the Mass TP back already from Alliance, out of range of Royal Never Give Up. But with the spin, Blink and TP back, they look for Setsu. Stampede forward. They need to close the distance on him, however, with the Lightning Bolt. Are they in range? And so he's trying to get in range for that glimpse. The Nimbus oh. will come down. Setsu triggers his BKB and begins his walk. Yeah, this is where the Alliance draft gets scary. They can blow all these big cooldowns, get full vision of the enemy side, and then have the glimpse possibilities. Even with and the Blink Dagger and Disruptor, it just allows that very long glimpse reach. Yes. Uh, and look at the 10k gold on Setsu. It's, that's, this is the one concern with the hero, of course. The, the whole advantage on RNG and the net worth right now mm -hmm. is all on Setsu's pocket, in Setsu's pocket or in his backpack. Uh -huh. He will be able to swap in the Scotty in just 15 seconds, but still, it's, it's the squishy factor. That's the concern if you're this brood. That's why I think the Scotty does make sense. He'll give himself a bit more effective HP. Mm -hmm. The problem is... <laughs> He's... As long as he can avoid the ET aura, mm. like then then it feels like he's gonna be okay. But if he can't, it's, it won't matter. So he switches it in. And the Aegis is timed out. Alliance, I like that they didn't look to push for Rex, because that does not matter at this point. They're gonna go for Throne if they're able to find an opening in this game. I actually like this more because they take the tier three tower, depending on where the pressure comes in, if they can get rid of that shrine, mm -hmm. then maybe Roshan becomes a little bit more of an even fight. Yep. And it's not RNG just buying back, because all their buying backs are coming off cooldown within the next minute. Shaman's gonna be the latest one. But that's that's when RNG yeah. like, well we can just throw our bodies at it, then we'll just use we'll use the like our money and just instantly come back into this game. And Alliance don't really have that answer just yet. Centaur and Juggernaut have theirs off cooldown at the moment. Disrupt will have to wait a little bit longer. Blink forward, looking for a glimpse. Okay, looking for a D ward. A 7k, 7.5 saves up on Mickey. I'll be curious to see what he oh, goes to buy. Boxing in trouble. He was sitting there trying to get rid of the Observe Ward. Insanians in the nearby. Oh, Flyby, no. that's a really nice beer, but the ET split tries to create a little bit more space, but they're going to get the kill on Disrupt. He's down, but so is Shaman. The two big disables from either side. Supports are gone. Now the jump comes forward. Maybe Tiger, he'll get that stop off in what time. No, he won't. He actually goes down and gets cancelled off. You at least return the soul bind up, and now Setsu goes once again over onto a boxy. Koifa looking to try and fight. He has to help out here, but they realize there's no way they can help. Centaur can buy back into this game the same way CK as well as but Shaman did. But there's no buyback on the Disruptor. He needs the gold. In fact, he has the GPM talent, so by the time the CD's up, he should be able to come back into this fight, but 20 seconds before Insania will be active, and Taiga still dead gold. as well for one more. 40 gold is what he needs. 30 gold. Yeah, 20 gets... gold. <laughs> it's, it's counting down. But the Mass Serpent Wars needs some cleaning. No glyph. Foxy will come in to try and take care of it. So Disruptor, his buyback is now back up again. He has the surplus available, even if we haven't got the gold bar up just yet. Now the stun's Monet. Oh jumps God, forward. Six seconds stun. Centaur's just been destroyed. Monet already used buyback. Only he has to blink himself away to safety, Ooh. but they're in so much hurt. But it's the damage output from Alliance that finally comes to fruition. There's and no CK Monet. is gone. Okay, there's no CK and there's no Centaur. So four on four for the next 120 seconds. And you can see, like, if, if Alliance can just hit people in the face, <laughs> they kill them, all right? That's uh -huh. the ET factor, he's in melee range. That CK becomes butter as soon as the AC on Setsu disappears because he, of course, met his demise. And man, the game still feels, this is so weird. I don't, uh -huh. I'm not sure if, the, if both teams are playing great or or poorly. It's like some weird combination of both. You, you know what You know what this reminds me of? Like you were, you were uh, having comparison between the way Alliance plays as well as OG plays. And it's the same type of feeling where you're like, man, I actually don't know who should really win this game. Each one has their own elements. But win conditions have gone totally out the window now. Yeah, it's, it's just who's able to execute the fight enough that you yeah. can then win the game. Uh, Everyone then needs to be dead. <laughs> I love it. There's a Dendi quote about it. He's like, at, the, at a certain point, Dota stops being Dota anymore. And it's just, you know, weird. You lose or win a game on a quarter of a second initiation. Did you BKB? Did you not? Did the stun land? Did you miss? And did someone die without buyback? Because at this point, a feed from either uh, Monet or Setsu just ends this game. Mm -hmm. Mikke and Koifa both have their buybacks. That's a huge edge right now for Alliance. Aegis is up, of course. RNG could pick that up to equalize. And I think this item on Afu, this is the game changer. He's got the Blink Hex available. If he can get that Soulbind initiation, all of a sudden maybe his team does have the damage output to find kills. But the mass Lotus Orbs on Alliance are really hurting their ability to chain CC. Oh, they're coming forward, Afu. Into the Glimmer Cape. Who's he got? Mikke, he's the closest one. 
Flybe so close as well. Mickey creates some illusions. Now Flybe into the BKB. He gets the first jump and once again disrupts the primary target with the Abyssal Blade that can slow him down. Insania, he never got the ulti off in time, but Flybe has copped so much damage because Mickey just stands his ground. He'll get the kill onto Mars, but they're not done yet. BKB from Setsu. They need this kill with the Hex. They've got the control. Juggernaut's dead. He's got buyback available, however. He'll burn it instantly. As they stampede, breaking free the Lotus Orb. Lanham cannot be that control factor he was for RNG previously. Insania has got to chill out, Toby. It's like the fourth <laughs> or fifth fight in a row. You've got Blink. You just have to hang out. You're in this super late game phase. Oh, quite All far. Mone, he's oh. found him. Five seconds done. Pull him in. He'll finish up he the side. He spent money. He doesn't buy back now. No, he doesn't, but he's got 88 gold short of it. They need some time, some space. 80 seconds oh. is how long they need. But they can buy it. But Roshan, he's going to go down. This is with the Aghanim's upgrade. This is with Refresher Shard. This is the whole kit and caboodle. Then RNG will be able to claim to try and finish this game. Just blows my mind, Toby. Boxy wasn't there. They're, they're running, they're meandering through their own jungle with the Red Riding Hood going for a stroll. And there's an RNG lineup there. And they oh, find. Oh, look at this. Lanham, they give him the Aghanim's upgrade yeah, and a refresher shot. Dude, they're just this going the, for it. This is going to be the double no wards. He, he can't do it yet. It's 45 seconds before he's going to have double wards available. But with double wards, they get guaranteed megas. But I don't think that's even enough but to end no this game. There's no disruptor. There's no disruptor. They're just going to just drop everything on this Rax. Oh, here they come. Setsu to the front lines. Mickey will be tested for his DPS. The quick stomp from Tiger. Hex is already out. Flyby jumps in once again. He's got the BKB available. He's holding him for as long as he possibly can. Lay in the arena. Do all the work. And Juggernaut, he will fall. No buyback available. You've already had the one come out from Zeus. And now Mone and Setsu, they stand their ground. Tiger cannot do anywhere near enough damage. Even with... Okay, never mind. He just slapped Mone down. Moving over to one Setsu. This ET Whoa. is hitting so hard. So hard. But he cannot hit anymore. They're all dead. And that should be... Game one of this best of three, where RNG, they are battling for the TI-9 slot. This bottom part of the bracket, everyone is trying to dethrone E-Home. RNG have the hardest road of all. Alliance just win this series, then they have the chance to go to TI-9.